Um, okay, we're in. I think it's recording. Well, we'll see anyway. Okay, so um, the, the idea behind this is that we're going to extend this. Remember, we did a, a lecture on, on metadata. And, and metadata is very interesting because it gives you an awful lot of information in terms of its location, who shot it, when, how, what with, everything. And it's the data that's hidden away from the main photograph stuff. It, it just describes what what's seen in the main file. Whereas on, on this disk, we're starting to look at the, the digital values that can be extracted from modern photography. Uh, and there are different ways that we can do this. So what I'm going to look at is how we look at the old photographs, the new photographs, the one you've taken on your phone, drones, everything to try and understand the power and the value of, of taking photographs in, in any shape or form. Um, this is a, a two photographs of exactly the same building. Uh, this is Guy's Cliff um, down in um, north of Warwick. And it was a job that I did to do a lot of work on the fire uh, works that we did on the main building. But this is the ruin at the front of the main building. And the one, the photograph on the left is one that I found hanging on a wall. And that is how it looked late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, it had been extended a couple of times. And what you're seeing there is the old house. Now, fortunately, the BBC came along and did um, um, a, uh, uh, a video recording here for a program that they did. And there was a fire scene in it and the fire scene got out of hand and the building burned down. What you see there now on the right hand side is the results of that fire and the demolition of some of the works because of its... Um, well, just because of the damage that the fire did. So looking around an old building when you're doing a survey, often as not, you may find um, an old photograph of the building as it was. And all I did was put my camera up against the old photograph and took a first shot of it. It was useful in showing how the building looked. And eventually we did a scheme on this to say that we were going to rebuild that old house. And they agreed to that and they spent uh, quite a bit of money getting information together. The actual build costs on this were just over two million. Um, but we couldn't have done it without the old photographs to allow us to see what we were trying to push it back to. The fact that this is a listed building and it's a scheduled monument because of the old chapel down on the other side of the, the job meant that we had to um, be as accurate as possible. And when we showed them the photographs, then the, the, the conservation officers in Historic England said, yeah, OK, we're with this. As long as it looks like this when you're finished and everybody was in agreement, that's what we wanted to see. So getting old photographs and anything you can find. I mean, I've even been into the archives of Birmingham um, Library. And when I've been working on jobs in Birmingham and had a look around there for old photographs, and it's surprising what they have got um, in terms of old photographs. Um, this is a photograph I did um, when I was doing some surveying, and um, I had a young student with me at the time. And what I said to him, look at the size of the bricks on this, and they were huge. It doesn't matter what the, the bonding pattern was. We can get that from the photograph. I think that's actually um, um, Old English. But what we did was we put a, a scale bar up against it, and now I can see what a metre run of brickwork would look like um, without having to record it. So it was an aid memoir more than anything else to try and get the, um, uh, the value of the brick sizes as a coursing detail. So just putting a just putting a surveyor's rod up against it, um, it was absolutely brilliant. By the way, if you ever go to Interbuild or whatever they call it these days, and you're walking around and somebody's offering you tapes and everything else, pick them up. The one you see there, I actually picked up of a, um, of a timber um, company's um, stand, and it was just a cheap boxwoods two metre scale, um, really nice. Um, if you buy them, they're about eight or nine quid, but 
and they were giving away for free. So, um, brilliant. What else can I see from that photograph? Well, I can see the condition of the brickwork, the mortar thickness, whether it was bucket, flat, mortar joint. It was actually flat there. So, you know, the, everything is now recorded down in that photograph. I can even go and take the colour from it. And because I took a close-up, which I've not shown you here, um, I can get the texture. But I can get the texture from that as well just by um, zooming in. So a photograph just as simple as this is, is immensely important and allows you to see precisely what is uh, going on. This may not look like anything but this is the metadata this is actually joseph Priestley building the, the building you're looking at and it's a, a a detail of the window mullion as it goes up the big sort of thingies that stick out and it was there just to show what the sort of detail is within the building and the fact that there is no ventilation there uh, but on the right hand side you can see all the uh, the metadata that google um, was dragging out of the actual photograph, and it shows you on the right-hand side. <coughs> it's the location data, um, the fact that it was on a Nikon, which it doesn't actually show, I don't think. Um, it says a Google Pixel 2. Um, maybe that, yes, that one was. It was actually a Google Pixel photograph that I took. Um, map location, because it, it does the recording on, on my phone. And, um, and a site plan to show exactly where that is. So it doesn't matter what you do or what you take it with, there is also always data available. The fact that you get it onto um, on a phone gives you the accurate location within about a meter. So always useful to, um, to take. On a big job, I tend to make a list of all the photographs. It, each time I take a photograph, I make a note. And um, if you see me with my um, my moleskin, that's what I use. Um, I take I take a load of photographs when I go there. And often as not, if I'm on a big site taking a lot, I will number them with the date, the time, whatever I'm pointing the camera at, and make a little note about why I took that photograph. It doesn't take long. It, it takes seconds to do, but you will really, really like the idea of it when you go back and you can't remember um, why did you take that photograph. It would also help others to understand the photo set because what you can do is you can take a, a PDF of that, that list and add it to the, um, to the list or the file that you've, you've saved them all into. Um, I also on a big job like um, I, I used to run Birmingham Botanical Gardens and we did a, um, a site survey of all the trees. So we put a map of the whole site up with all the markings on there of all the photographs we took. And so whoever we gave, whoever comes and look at that file set would know exactly which tree we're looking at and from what direction we took the photograph without having to think about it. So um, very useful. If you can make a list of the photographs you've made and add that to the photo set, because you may not be the only person ever looking at it. The instance case of Birmingham Botanical Gardens, I actually resigned from that job as I, cut, I, as I headed towards retirement and gave it to a new architect's practice in the center of Birmingham. And they looked at it and I had a note back from them saying, thanks for doing all that because now we know you know, where photographs were taken and everything else. It was very, very useful. Street view. If you're a technician or you're a building surveyor or even a QS, then street view is going to be a lifesaver. Uh, you can just drag the little man from the bottom right hand side and put it onto the blue line and you will get immediately a street view. Um, as in the case of Joseph Priestley building because the land to the right hand side down towards the the cycle factory was um was private at the time they didn't do all of the building but nevertheless the main hill um is is done and it's a it really is a lifesaver um but it's limited there is no way to alter the view that you get other than changing and panning around you can't go up and take a different view from a different angle it is limited 
Um, but sharing location is dead easy. Um, just take a screenshot or just take the link and, and that will then send, you can send that to anybody and they can see exactly what you've been looking at. And of course, it's very usable on mobile phones. So if you're trying to understand the building when you're there, you can quickly go into your mobile phone, pick up Street View and look at the building as a whole rather than having to walk around thinking, oh, yes, I know where I am now and everything else. So, you know, even a, a simple Street View is, is a lifesaver. The, the times I've gone back to Street View because I've done a survey of a building and I can't remember whether I took or I can't find my um, hi, Ari. Um, um, I can't find my my notes for that particular bit of the survey, and I can count bricks, or I can see where everything um, comes into place. Um, can you turn off your um, uh, your microphones, please? Someone's got some feedback. Thank you very much. So, um, what is the better version? Well, Google Earth is far better in the way that you can pan around and see three D drawings or buildings in any shape or form from any angle. You can pan around the building, you can do a fly through, you can record it. Um, I did one for uh, Roz when she was asking me about a presentation she's got to do and I did it for her. And it, it really does show the building in its, in its best sh uh, shape. There you can see we're looking from the north of the building, looking down onto uh, Joseph Priestley building on the top left hand side, uh, Curzon, and then the station. And you can see when I took this uh, photograph, it, it was still um, haven't been hacked around. So um, that, that's the HS2 site. So you can tell that the date I, I, I took it. But it's very useful to do. Google Earth has its problems in that when we look at photogrammetry later on, you'll understand the difference between. Um, the way that Google makes their 3D maps and everybody else, they use photogrammetry. So um, can I measure on Google Earth? The answer is absolutely yes. You can do some very good measurements on there. I've not shown it on there because I've cropped the photograph down, but down the bottom right-hand side of that top photograph, you will see that there is a scale bar and a measuring tool, and it is very, very useful. And the fact that you can count bricks just as easily as you can on Street View is probably a bonus and um, particularly on the way that Joseph Priestley building because of the slope of the main road you can count the bricks to get the height of um, the fall but also you can use it to work the height of the building out very easily either through counting bricks from other buildings or using the measurement tool um, and you can do lining out you can get areas on that as well and um, it's a very very useful tool Unfortunately, it does take a decent machine to run it, so um, doing it on your phone probably isn't a good idea. So, um, Google Earth and photogrammetry. Um, Google Earth is, when it first came out, was done by a whole load of people using SketchUp. Google bought SketchUp simply because they needed people to go and start doing 3D drawings of the buildings that, around the world. And to a large extent, this was done. It was very limited because of the number of buildings, obviously, on the planet. But big places like um, Vegas and some of London and some of the big cities in the US, and particularly in Japan and China, um, they did them. But they were limited in comparison to the, the total numbers. What changed that and why Google actually sold SketchUp was that they started to work out how to do satellite photographs and work out the 3D geometry from photographs. And this is called photogrammetry. We can do it easily now with, with the software we've got. And I'll go into it. This um, video here that I've put up is Google Earth's incredible 3D imagery explained. It's not a bad video. It's an introduction to photogrammetry, and I strongly recommend that you look at it. Um, I quite liked it when I saw it, and um, I thought, wow, this is really, really cool. Um, there are better videos out there now. This one's quite a bit old, but watch it on your own time and see um, exactly um, how it's all done. Um, 
I've said this before, and I'm going to go and reiterate it now, that photo storage is incredibly important. It should be part of your digital plan. Everybody should who's access to the job should know that there is a digital plan. And part of that digital plan is that your location for all your videos and also your photographs is well known. David and I, when we ran Construction Limited, my, my architect's practice, we use Google Drive. And um, it, it was great. Um, even now, Google give, I can't remember how much towards photographs, for free. So um, it worked very well for us. We also had a Dropbox account, um, very secure, very good, very easy, but it was expensive. And so we knocked that on the head and took all the photographs out and just relied on Google Drive. Um, at that time, we also had Google Suites as the company website. And so we just used that and it was very, very good to use. But your digital plan is important. It shows what you're doing, how you're doing it and why. And things like your photo storage should be listed there. And if you can, the things I said before about plans, notes on photographs, everything like that should be up there so people can see. So um, recently, um, a lot of the, the teachers or the lecturers within um, the, uh, the uh, construction department um, at BCU went out to South Africa um, to do some work out there. and and they took out a drone with them and it was incredible the moment we saw the videos we saw the importance of it um i've been doing this for a while now and you'll see one that i did earlier in the next slide but drone video is not sci-fi anymore it is day-to-day -day business as far as recording sites are concerned um winds, crane reaches, weather, everything can be seen on these machines. And they're not expensive. They're quite cheap in comparison to what they used to be. Um, they're an excellent way to see building contact. Single shots can easily be extracted, but obviously the videos are, are so good. Um, I did one, and you'll see it is um, Draper's Hall in Coventry, and um, it, it was not expensive. And the client got a permanent record of his roof um, and at 68, I'm not that inclined to go wandering over roofs anymore. And so this was an easy way um, to get a roof survey without having to clamber around um, on tops of ladders and, and, and going through um, very small roof openings to try and get out onto a roof to inspect it. Here, you can do it all with a drone. Um, and the video you'll see on the right hand side is well, I'm actually going to show this in a little what just a little bit of it. I mean it is very useful. And you can see here the way that the video is now um running out. And this was a pilot was doing it. I was just standing there watching him do it. On the screen I could see where to go. So I was directing him and saying, Can I move over? Can you show that chimney? And and we could see and, and here you can see that the lightning conductor rods were all um failing. Um, they'd started to strip off the, the brackets holding the, the, the metal in place had gone. And when we actually looked at it, we saw that whoever did it wasn't a lightning engineer. Um, it was, and there you can see, look, it's starting to sag there. Um, on tops of the chimneys that have been capped off, we, we um, that's not correct. There should be a, a little spike standing up there, which would attract the electricity onto it rather than just a, um, a little square of metal over the top. Um, but the whole thing is in really bad condition. That chimney there actually leans towards the, the main building. Not dangerous, but something we wanted to look at. Um, but you can see the rest of the roof is not that bad. Um, and we took four of these um, uh, videos from each corner of the building. Um, and it was very, very useful to explain to the client precisely what needed to be done. Rather than me doing drawings and showing them, then we said, no, this is it. Oh, by the way, did you know you've got a satellite camera um, um, uh, thingy up on the top of the roof? And that is eating into the asphalt. And look at the way that the, um, the um, sorry, the felt was being uh, eaten away by um, a fungi there because it, uh, the drainage was blocked. So you can see an awful lot of information just by sending a drone up and doing it. By the way, this was a very windy day. And it took him four batteries to try 
and get all this done. Each time he did um, a corner, he had to bring it down, change the battery and send it back up again because the thing was leaning into the wind so much. But you would not see that from the stability of the thing because it had one of these auto stability things on it. He set it in position and it just stayed there. Very, very, very good. Um, so let's go back onto, onto that and let's have a look at this photogrammetry um, because Recap Pro is extremely good at taking photographs and pulling them in to um, into the Autodesk system. And Recap Pro is, is the one that you should be looking at to do that. It's very, very good. Um, I've put down some other software that you could look at. Our drone Deploy is very good and very specific towards drone uh, photography and videos. Uh, Pix4D is a mapper, a photogrammetry software that is quite expensive. Drone Deploy um, Enterprise for 3D mapping is, is a little bit better than the standard. Autodesk 3 Recap is, is, is very good. Actually, that's being updated at the moment, and I think the version that we've got on our uh, PCU computers is, is the older version, but hey, hey, we can't access them anyway. Um, uh, there are other uh, maps made easy. Uh, Zephyr is very good. That's very popular. Agisoft, obviously, from the, um, from the photograph people. And Precision Hawk 3D map software is also um, very good. As you would say, it's very specific towards making maps. There are lots of different programs out there, and, and, and they work very well. What I'm going to show you here is, is um, a way of taking a photograph and using it within SketchUp, all the versions of SketchUp that you've got. And by the way, if you've got a machine and you want SketchUp, there is a license here that will work until the end of May for free for the complete set. That includes the, the sheet um, view and also the main program, and you get it for free. Um, but watch this, watch this video. Um, the guy on it is annoying to the least. He's American, very brash, and his accent is, is crazy. But what he does, he does a very, very good example and tutorial of using a photograph that's in 3D and making a 3D model from that accurately. Um, it is so simple to do. Um, Mohammed and I were talking earlier on about this, and you will see that there is such a simple way to take a 3D photograph and create a 3D model from that 3D, so, sorry, uh, perspective photograph. So you take the perspective, line it up with the, with the tools you're given, and all of a sudden you've got yourself a 3D model in SketchUp. Very, very good, very easy to do. And I've used it a couple of times to create something and then exported that back out of that into Revit and continued on with it. Um, I put some some links up about photogrammetry, reality capture, and 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 buildology. I've got some recap pro, I've got some very good stuff on there. Um, also, uh, Draper's Hall video set. Um, I've not put the link up onto that, but you can see the the uh, the video up there. Um, I'll try and find where I've put them um, and uh, put your link up so you can all see it. And of course, the stuff for SketchUp you want to use have seen. So let me just go out of that and go on to the next um, slide because I want to introduce to you the concept of um, a photogrammetry uh, with Recap Pro. Um, I'm not saying as a first year student you should be doing it, but if you get the chance and you want to play around with it, have a look at it. The video there is Autodesk's um, video, and it is very good. Um, it shows you um, how to do it, how you can manipulate it. And uh, obviously, because you're a BCU, that you can get educational licenses for all this software. Um, again, the useful stuff about taking photographs, uh, you'll probably recognize that as the Woodman. Um, looking from uh, Curzon Building Station and looking onto the building itself. Beautiful building, listed, of course. Um, but you'll see that I took this from, um, from Street View. And look at the way that the, not the telegraph pole, the lamp, the lamp standards 
the one on the right hand side is almost vertical but the ones on the left hand side are, are all pulling in like crazy and obviously they're not like that this is a problem when you're looking at 3d photographs taken from something like um, google earth or street view um, because of the photogrammetry you'll get some distortion um, and you have to live with it i'm afraid until google gets it right um, we live with this distortion so um this is a, a shot of a, of a piece of marble a, a carving and the little blue discs you can see on there is the way that you would take an awful lot of photographs with your phone no more than that and then walk around it taking photographs from every angle you can possibly think of and just keep on taking them and then what you would do is load them up to recap pro and recap pro would actually scan each one of them and then start to build that bust in 3d um it is very very good very simple to do it takes a long time um you may as well go and put it up at night and then come back in the morning and day um, but it is very good if you've got um, an object you want to scan you can use this your own phone take as many photographs as you can each of the the rings you can see there try and keep the consistency in distance and and height so that you get it makes it easy for the photographs to be used um it's very easy mohammed i don't know whether you did this at all um, um but we we had some success i remember hadar and sagal when they were doing it um in years before you um, made very good use of it yeah um again you know this is google street view and just look at the way the distortion is there um the building is actually leaning back um and, and obviously that's not the way it is so just be careful when you're doing it um even when you're using google earth and if you look at google earth and go down to the pub opposite joseph Priestley building um in the students union you'll see that even then they're still having problems with photogrammetry and also getting the buildings to look right um i did my own house here and you know it from a distance it looks good but when you zoom into it the distortion is quite huge but you know it's 3d and, and it's very useful that's uh, google earth and you can see there the um the building itself i took some shots on there and from that you can see an awful lot of how the building works where everything is in relation to it, the heights of other buildings and actually what's on the roof which is highly um useful um again i've put the this is the video for um uh, for taking photographs for recap pro um it is very useful it is good if you've um if you want to do 3d um uh, photography um i just listen to it and go through it if i were you um, and then you combine the photographs to Retac Pro and then into Revit. Um, that's the way that I did it. Um, easy to do, very simple. And if you follow this, this guidelines on here, you'll, you'll see how easy it is to do. Um, I can't remember what that one was, but we'll have a look at that in a bit. And then export the model to three um, into Revit. And once you've got into Revit, you can do all you need to, to do on it. Um, again, I've put some links on there about how it will all work. Um, I really can't remember why I put that up there. Let's play it and have a look, shall we? Um, and see what it is. Oh, that was a private video. I wonder what that was. I'll look at that and I'll correct it later on. So that's it about uh, photo uh, photogrammetry uh, and the way it worked. Um, I don't expect as a first year student for you to be doing much on photogrammetry. I put it up because it's of interest. It's the second years that I want to uh, get into this, but I thought it'd be useful if you saw it and understood how easy it is to create something like that using just your simple camera and then loading it into something like Recap Pro. There are other there are other photograph um, photogrammetry uh, free sites out there as well that does exactly the same. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I am. Um, around now until 11 o'clock um or is it 10 o'clock i've got my next lecture um if there's anything you want or anything you need just let me know 
um, uh, Tom is in, Rebecca, Holly, and Harry. Um, good to see you all. And Mohammed's here if you want to talk to him as um, he runs this. Um, no, sorry, he, he um, tends to look at the way that we work here um, and helps me out doing the um, uh, the uh, the first year students. So it's anything he wants to. If he want to ask me or Mohammed, please do. Um, I'm going to reshow this lecture on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And by then, I'll have sorted out a couple more videos and perhaps some more stuff on uh, and Recap Pro that I um, don't know why that link wasn't working. Should have checked it. So that's it. Any questions for anybody? Um, um, let me just um, go up to here and see whether I can, um, if this has been um, 